This Three Beards Media Podcast may contain mature themes. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Like the podcast. Nailed it! This Three Beards Media Podcast is sponsored by Revelton Distilling Company. When Rob and Christy Taylor started following the Kentucky Bourbon Trail in 2012, they fell in love with not only bourbon, but the entire distilling process. Just eight short years later, in 2020, Revelton Distilling Company was opened, offering an entire family of products, including vodka, gin, whiskey, and Revelton Shine. Come visit the tasting room at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, where you can sample one of their many spirits, including four gold medal winners. Can't make it to Osceola today? Not a problem, as you can pick some up at your local Hy-Vee or Fairway grocery stores. Follow Revelton Distilling on Twitter or Instagram at Revelton DC or their website www.reveltondistilling.com. You know the story. He was the son of former slaves, but he was destined for so much more. His family knew there was something special about him, and his untimely, racially motivated death in 1923 would mean something for the honor of his race, family, and self. The country would know his name, and he would never be forgotten. Jack Trice's life was ended before he could cement his legacy. The Trice Legacy Foundation was created from a tragic event to promote and do good. Jack wanted to help educate his race and community by creating a culture around family and doing better each day. Iowa State is where the legacy was started, but to finish the job, we need your help. Learn more about the Jack Trice Legacy Foundation and how you can donate and support by visiting www.johnjacktrice.org. Coaches Kalashes are back and better than ever. Fans of Coach's Colossus no longer have to wait for the popular eatery to reopen its doors. Customers can now find a bigger kitchen and expanded menu items at their new location at 2777 100th Street in Urbandale. Brent and his staff have fresh, homemade colossus made every day, as well as expanded coffee options like lattes and espressos. Just as before, Coach's is bringing a taste of Texas to the Midwest and can cater your corporate meetings, birthday parties, weddings, and of course, tailgates. Visit them again at 2777 100 Street in Urbandale, Iowa. Nobody should go to bed hungry at night. Hunger Loaves, a nonprofit organization, is working to feed the world one loaf at a time. This family endeavor to help feed homeless was established by Marcus Pfizer and his wife, Monique in hopes of paying forward the blessings that they have received. Follow them on Instagram at Hunger Loaves and help them fulfill the mission to ensure no child goes to bed hungry. Three Beards Media is proud to present Sigh of the Storm, a weekly wrap-up show of football and basketball from the athlete's perspective. Your host, George Trice, is joined by Iowa State Cyclone legends Big Play Brett Curvey and Marcus Pfizer. Sponsored by Revelton Distilling Company, we welcome you to Sigh of the Storm. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of the Sigh of the Storm. I am your host, George Trice, joined by my co-host, Marcus Pfizer and Brent Carvey. How y'all doing tonight, fellas? Doing well, doing well. It's kind of out here in Vegas. I don't know how it is back then in the, in the Midwest or how it is down there for you, George. But man, they got up to 112 today. Where we at? Yeah, I think we hit 112. It's like it's still 106 right now. Right. Um, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was, it was hot today, man. They had the advisory, stay inside. Yeah, yeah. right. But Brent, yeah, how your weather out there, man? My eighty-seven. I can't oh, yeah. about my you got that fall weather. Practice tonight. That was good. Then I'll <laughs> take it all day. <laughs> man, see, that's and you know what? You know, we talking about football, and I will tell you that is what I miss about throwing a nice sweatshirt on or a long sleeve, and and being out in the elements. Whereas out here, you don't you don't do that. You can't be in the elements like that until November, December, where you can throw the sweatshirt on. 
without sweating. So I miss I miss the fall football. I don't feel like it don't feel like football season, but it was. It started a week and a half ago for college football. Uh, NFL start this Thursday. You know, so it's it's we in it. We in the thick of it. Lock and load it. Yeah, it don't feel like no season out here. It's just just heat. <laughs> like you get out, you get out into it. You know, we get we have a uh, a little pit bull. Oh, she, she's not little. She's nine years old. Now, but you know, she's a house dog. So when she goes outside, you know, do a business. She's not out there no more than two or three minutes. And she'll beat you back. And so she'll let you know she's a house dog. She don't play with that. <laughs> Now, I, I got to ask, because, I mean, I see out here, I do not have them personally for my two dogs. Do you have shoes for your dog? No, absolutely not. All right. Not. We don't, we don't do that. All right. I just was checking. All right. <laughs> I, I see it out here. My wife be saying that like, she want to do it. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. She you got she, shoes for the dogs to, to protect against the heat? How much yeah. High concrete? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, oh, during the day, you can uh, fry egg they on the uh, on the sidewalk and stuff like that. So the pad of their feet, you know, sitting in the house. Yeah. yeah, they got they got shoes for dogs, man. Yeah, we I mean, we, yeah. we we get out for a walk before you know I get up at six o'clock, so before the sun really gets up, you know, hit okay. the clock or something like that. But we have a lot of grass and everything in the backyard. But like I said, you know, okay. a little concrete that we have around the pool. She hits it for a couple of seconds and she's back with that. After you know, I got you. Come back here. Yeah, so our listeners out there, y'all think we just talking, you know, but, you know, side of the storm, it's about the weather. It's about <laughs> what, it's about what ISU. See, my co-host didn't know how I was going to turn that when we were talking about the weather. Uh, hey, I thought we were just out. having a conversation, but, you know, you got to flip it on them. You know, you flip it on them, and then you bring it back to the, to the storm that's brewing, you know, because, you know, we're recapping last week, but we're also, you know, previewing next week, the big game. You know, the Cy Hawk series, you know, and, you know, we got to we got to show up this year for that. And, and we'll get to that because, you know, the last time we won, it's been it's been 11 years. 2011, I think, was like the last year that we won that game, Oof. you know, but, but you know, it, it, so it's, it's crazy. That it's been that long. You know, my my some of my relatives uh, from my wife's side are out in Cedar Rapids and they'll tell me down to the day it's been three thousand. 769. <laughs> I don't want to hear that, man. Um, you know, but you know, but this is, you know, we've been we've been showing progress every year. And I know, I know Matt Campbell and his team are prepping for these these boys next week. But you know, we'll get to that in a little bit. But you know, we played SEMO last week, um, you know, Southeast Missouri, and it was our home opener. I'm I'm used to us playing you and I for the home opener. So this was this was a chain, welcome change for us to play somebody a little bit different get another team some exposure um we won you know cyclones win cyclone victory 42 to 10 um you know on the, on the win column a win is a win you know and we like i said we're gonna get to the the iowa game too they won too it wasn't pretty but you know a win is a win and we both going into this game uh one and oh and so um you know i'm just gonna go through the stats so for those that don't really know the stats you know we had 20 26 first downs uh, total of 469 yards, 293 passing, um, 176 rushing. We had three three penalties for 20 yards. You know, we had and we had the ball for more more time, about 32 minutes, a little over 32 minutes. So, you know, the stats against against um, our our opponent, they had 15 first downs. So we you know we almost doubled them there. Total yards, 320, so a little bit less. Um, they had they had about half what we had on the rushing game. They had about 98 yards, uh, but they had uh, 222 through the air. Um, but, you know, what What I look at is one of the, the outstanding things that, you know, kind of hurt them also in this game um, was they had nine penalties for 100 yards. Um, so that was that's just something you look at and you say, man, that's a big disparity there. Um, you know, and looking at that game. So what did what did y'all see? What did y'all what y'all think about the game? Uh, I mean, you know what? A personal opinion, I've been waiting for Hunter Deckers to get out because I've been watching him for a little bit and the kid can swing it. And I think everybody finally got a chance to see that. And I know there was a lot of questions around what he was gonna be able to do when Brock left. And I mean, in all honesty. That big body, he was a big body gunslinger from what I understood. So there was so much hype about the kid coming in, how good of a leader he was. So 
I can honestly say I didn't have a doubt that he'd come out and put some kind of a show up, but I was surprised to see the numbers that he actually put up. Um, he was really throwing that thing all over the place. So I yeah. think that leaves, I leaves us in a lot of, that puts us, that makes us hard to stop because <laughs> yeah. he's fairly accurate and can put the ball wherever he wants. So one of the, you, you bring up a good point about him, you know, and I, I, I didn't pay too much attention to him last year, last couple of years, but 25 for 31, 293 yards, four touchdowns and an interception and, and an and a 83 QBR. What I picked up from that, you, you brought up Purdy. Um, Deckers releases that ball fast and hard. And, and that's not something I saw in, in Purdy most of the time. This ball was a bullet to where he wanted it to go. Um, that, I mean, that's good and bad because you can't lead, a, you can't lead your receivers um, if you're throwing it that fast, you gotta you gotta be on the money, and and he was on the money, you know. Mm-hmm. So if we can keep doing that, I, that's what I picked up from what Deckers was doing. Yeah, as, as a young quarterback, you know, he's only a sophomore to go on his his first game and to throw for almost 300 yards is is not bad at all. Um, like Brent said, you can really spin that thing, you can really get it out of there extremely fast, um, and it's, it's very promising to see. You know, he, mm-hmm. he had some some huge shoes to fill, you know, to to be considered arguably uh, the greatest or one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever played at Iowa State. Come in right in behind that. That's that's a lot of pressure on you. But, um, you know, to to have been there a year uh, to prepare and um, following it in his footsteps with a great program, with a great coach staff that is going to be there to work with him. It's, I know this is very, very promising for him. Um, I know he had a, a good week. He's going to have a good week <laughs> this week leading into the <laughs> Iowa game. And um, he, he should have uh, great confidence. And uh, we're looking forward to that for sure. Yeah. Now, you know, you, Brent, you talked about his work ethic, you know, um, you know, looking at that now. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going ahead to the game next week, but it looks, it looks to me like, you know, he can, he can throw with the best of them off that first game. Uh, I'm not I'm not talking about the defense of our of our opponent or anything like that. I'm just thinking about what he did behind our offensive line. So we don't talk we don't talk about that line that protects him that gave him the time to do that um, without a lot of penalties and things like that. So on offense or defense, not a lot of penalties. So they did a good thing. So if, if he can keep doing what he's doing, do you feel he's going to achieve a, a lot more following as, as Marcus talked about following in Purdy's footsteps? I think I mean. I think to go back on what you said in the beginning, he he's a gunslinger, right? So for him, that ball jumps out his hand. It gets to his receivers a whole lot quicker and faster where Purdy was more of a touch passer, I guess would be the best way for, you know, to describe it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think about another gunslinger in the NFL, Josh Allen. He was a slinger mm-hmm. too. He'd get the ball where it needs to be. So I think, you know, it's a whole lot to build on, but I think, He'll set himself apart just in how he throws the ball and how often he will. Um, he's a scrambler too. He's a bigger body kid than Purdy was. So obviously I think there'll be clear, clear differences in their playing styles, but I think he's a great predecessor to <laughs> to, yeah. to Brock. You know, yeah. I think um, you know, Brock is those are huge shoes to feel, like Marcus said. Like, I mean, the yeah. guy shattered every record in Iowa State history. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, <laughs> like to to be on the bench, like <laughs> man, I gotta I gotta run this next. Like, how do I how do I compete with that? But I mean, if anybody has a chance at you know touching any of those records, it's, it it has to be this kid. Yeah, no, and I, and I totally agree with that. And you know, having, having a uh, a wide out like Xavier Hutchinson uh, Hutchinson mm-hmm. there that you know yep. just completely. You know, had had a game uh, last Saturday. You know, to 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 go for one twenty eight on only eight catches and three t- uh, touchdowns is just phenomenal. So mm-hmm. to, to have an upperclassman out there that that you know you, you can look you can look for um, when it, when it's going to get stuff and to you know make big plays for you. Now that that's an extreme comfort that you now I'm sure any quarterback would love to have. Yeah, you you took me to the next to the next thing as as we look at um, you know what Hutchinson did and looking at Iowa State's receiving, you know, two hundred ninety three yards. And you and you brought up you know uh, over over uh, a third, almost almost a half mm-hmm. of our yards was Xavier. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, you're right on that. I mean, 
you know, I, I, I looked at that kid and I, I'm like, man, who is number eight? Like, who is, who right. is this kid? <laughs> like, what is he doing out there? And I mean, it was, it was exciting to watch him um, and, and bring some, um, um, you know, seeing he brings some, he brought some physicality out there to that role too. He wasn't letting nobody body him. And, you know, I, I looked at that, but I also looked at overall, you know, uh, going back to Deckers, he spread the ball. So a lot mm-hmm. of receivers touched the ball. Um, and so I think that that was, you know, something that was that was good. So he was testing his weapons, testing where he can throw to see where he can go, because, you know, we had the longest the longest catch uh, of the day wasn't actually Hutchinson. It was Wilson. You know, he had a thirty nine. He had one catch for thirty nine yards. Now, I don't I don't know how many of them check. I can check stats, see how many times he was targeted. But, you know, that's when I when I see that um, last year, he did have, you know, 114 yards the whole season. So he already has, you know, almost half of the yards he had in the first game of the season. So this may be his opportunity to break out a little bit as well with, um, you know, with Decker's, you know, with Decker's hitting him up a little bit more. So I think that may be a, a good sign for our Iowa State receiving core. I don't, and I don't know your thoughts on that, but that's what I was seeing when I, when I think about that. I agree. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you kind of get to see a lot of the other guys step up. I like Wilson. I mean, Hutchinson has been a hidden star. Like he, mm-hmm. he's been a hidden star. I think, was it last year? I think he had a touchdown call back. Was that Noel? Couldn't remember, but had a celebration too early or something, but he's been one of those that he has the potential to go off whenever he gets a chance. Um, but, you know, having that, those superstars there last year obviously kind of overshadowed his, you know, his his presence. So I think this year with all of those other big names gone, this will be, you know, key time for him to kind of shine. And some of the other guys, we got a huge big body receiver in Sean Shaw. I mean, the kid's like six, mm-hmm. six, 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 seven, two, twelve. Like he's a big body out there. I mean, I know he only had a couple catches for twenty-one yards, but he averaging ten yards a pop. I mean, almost everybody averaged double digits a catch. Yeah. When, when Hunter was spreading it out, so that's I mean that's huge for the Iowa State offense in general too, because you double down on one person, we got somebody else coming right behind him. So that helps us out tremendously. Yeah, you know, you and you think about. Um... You know, the fact that he was even getting the running, the running backs was, you know, we talked about the rushing um, 176 yards with the running backs was getting in, involved in the uh, the passes, too. So the, a couple of running backs had some uh, some catches as well. So they were they were playing and they were they were feeding off of uh, what was going on in the game. And, that, and that's good IQ for these players to know, OK, let me come help my quarterback. So they made they made Deckers look like a star um, and the fact that they were they were reading the field and the plays as well as could be expected um, at that, at the game. So I think that we had a lot of good things to build on. Um, It's not a fair comparison because we didn't really get to see what Iowa can do. Um, You know, so it's not a fair comparison to to be able to compare what we, what we saw them do compared to what we, what we did, but looking at what we did, we, we had some great, great takeaways on that offensive side. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like Brent said, to to have these big bodies as wide receivers, that's always a great uh, sign for a quarterback, you know, to be able to throw it up there and let those little guys go out there and duke it out and, and, and fight for a reception. Um, you know, to have that comfort out there for you, you know, as, as a young quarterback, you know, it's, it's definitely something that uh, he's going to gonna build on. So, we're looking forward to, you know, him to continue to build on the success that he had this week. Um, we understand, you know, you know, Southeast Missouri State isn't isn't one of the formidable foes we're going to be facing in the year in the uh, schedule to come. But still, you know, a win is a win, and you know, just as, just as important practice is important, and preseason games are important. Games like these are important as well. So we're definitely glad to see the double. Yep. Yep. Okay. So y'all got anything else y'all want to add on on our offense before I, I switch to the the defense and see and then talk about you know some of the things that um, saw on defense. Anything else y'all want to add on the um, on the offensive side? I mean, I think to kind of piggyback what, what Marcus was just saying, and I guess it's more so in general. It's been a while since we've seen Iowa State come out and handily win a game, first game mm-hmm. of the year. So I think that just speaks one volumes to the program. 
that they're actually come a long way and they're actually actively trying to win this first game and not looking past it. Not to say that we did that before, but, you know, having you and I on the schedule and maybe South Dakota State or something like that on the schedule, we struggle with those mm-hmm. games. So I think yeah. this was a, a big accelerator for our offense to kind of be able to come out and put some points up. So that allowed them to kind of, you know, be able to operate a little bit more freely. So I think that builds a, a lot more confidence too heading into this week, my yeah. personal opinion. Yeah, and I, and I, I think Jerry Brock is going to have, you know, his touches this year, you know, um, as, as the running back to, uh, again, another guy that's following up, <laughs> one of the all-time greats. You know, that's right. not easy to do. Uh, but, you know, he's been there for a few, for a few years to, to come in. Um, he's a junior this year. So to be able to be a classman, you know, he had 16 touches for 104, so that's not bad. You know, average is 6.5. So I know that that feels good for him as well. He's going to continue to build on that. And, um, you know, as, as as we put everything together, you know, the run attack and the throwing attack, you know, to, to combine that with the defensive end, uh, we're looking forward to, you know, having a good, good year this year. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, wrapping up that offense, scored in every quarter. Um, seven in the first quarter, 14 in yes. the second, seven in third, and then 14 again. Okay. So, you know, we were, you were scoring. We, we, we were taking advantage of the drives and of the time we had on the, on the clock. So, you know, that's good. And then as we, as we pivot to the defense, they didn't score in three quarters. Um, they scored in the second quarter. Um, but look at our, the receiving for um, Southeast Missouri. So we did give up three <laughs> Three uh, were plays that were, you know, almost uh, one was 29 yards, one was 30, and one was 41. So we gave them some big plays, some big catches. Um, you know, when I, when I look at that, the defense overall for the rushing, they only had, you know, 98 yards and, you know, 20, 22 carries on that. So they, they, you know, they they ran the ball more than they threw the ball. So we stopped the run game. So, but I was still concerned about some of those big plays, you know. So, I mean, big play curve. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you. <laughs> oh, Nat, since we're talking about the the big plays that we gave up on defense. Well, I mean, you know, going back to kind of the rushing yards. Anytime you hold the team under 100 yards, it's always a good day. Um, rushing, so that's always a good game. But quite honestly, if you go back and kind of break down the rushing attack, the quarterback was the one that one had the most carries and had the most yards. So he pretty much carried the team, uh, mm-hmm. had 12 carries, 74 yards. So, I mean, of their 98, you know, he, he kind of took the brunt of it. And a lot of that was just on broken plays. So in watching the game, our, our DBs did their jobs. They covered everything up, but nobody was home for the QB. So he was able to sneak out and, you know, pick up a bunch of big runs. And that that's what kind of hurt us. Mm-hmm. Um, I think on the other side of that, though, it's one of those. Our defense has always been a bend but don't break defense. Um, so here and there, we will get beat on the back end on something. But whatever happens, we, we tend to get TFLs. We'll get a big play, a sack somewhere in there, mm-hmm. and we're right back off the field. Or we hold the guys to, you know, the three points. So um, I think that's what Haycock has kind of done is, you know, made the defense kind of susceptible in some ways. Uh, he fills the team out, but uh, once he locks in, I mean, they didn't score the whole second half. So it's like, yeah. I figured you out that first half. So now I'm going to show you what this defense is really about. And you and you rather, and you, you really rather the, co- the quarterback be the ones getting all the rushing yards. That shows that you're doing your job on everything else. So those are, I mean, in my, in my mind, when I see the quarterback, I don't feel like those were designed. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Simo was like, you know what, we got to, we're going to design these run plays for him because, you know, we just know we can't compete with him. And if that was the case, then they did well. But if those were just broken plays and he got lucky on some broken plays, I think that that shows a lot to what our defense can do. Um, and, yeah, we gave up three big plays, but they didn't capitalize on it because of what our D was doing. So giving up a couple big plays, but then, you know, locking down on defense, you know, not not getting down and letting them score because you're like, man, they just beat us for 41 yards, man. They just beat us for 30 yards. And then you kind of you kind of catch back from that and say, you know what? Yeah, you got me on that one, but I'm, I'm about to get you back. And I think that's right. what they showed a little bit out there. Yeah, uh, and like I said, in games like this, yeah, we never know what, what, what goes on. I mean, I'm sure Brent can probably tell us a little bit better than, you know, Georgia and I know. But it could be a situation where in a game like this, you know, we're trying some things. You know, the, the coaching staff, the defensive 
coordinator are trying some things. You know, let's let's see what works this way, what works that way. We know we're more talented than them offensively. We know we can put the points on the board. So let's, you know, get in a couple of different schemes to see uh, what, what will work. What will happen if we go this way, if we, you know, don't pressure the quarterback and let him get out, you know, to get some yards or something like that. I mean, to, for him to have 74 of the 98, that's mm -hmm. a ton of yards. Um, you know, to, to stop him from making those plays, it could have maybe opened up some other, you know, quick slants or some deep balls or something like that. So um, it could it could be a, a number of things, you know, even even with all of the yards that he was able to to uh, to run for. You know, mm -hmm. they only still only scored 10 points. So um, not to call, you know, SEMO you know, anything like a, a practice schedule or a practice team or anything like that, but Typically in teams like that, when you know you're more talented and you can uh, try some things, you that's this kind of like extra practice time where we're in game situation and the game situation, and we're going to try different things that's going to help us out later on down the road. Yeah, and and big up big ups to Simo because they didn't give up. You know, it's like we 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 played a great game. Um, they were still they were still attacking. You know, no matter being down ten, they were still attacking and trying to trying to do their best out there. Um, and so, sure. you know, sometimes, sometimes you want to give up, you know, you see some give up in the fight. You don't see that, that fighting that dog anymore. I don't think I don't, I didn't never, I never saw them not fighting, um, which is big ups to them. But again, Iowa state didn't let up. Um, and you know, we, we tried some things as well. We were, we were doing our playbook because again, you don't want to show everything you can do, um, as you like go into a big game, like next week or right. this week, sorry, it ain't even next week no more. It's this week. Um, you don't want to show all your cards, you know? So it's like, it's, they were preparing for next week while they were getting some, some of the wrinkles out um, of, the, of the dress shirt. So they, they're going to be prepared for next week. Oh yeah. Got to make it. I mean, you know, like, so I'm a high school coach too. And I always tell them like first game, I want to be super vanilla. Like if I can run as a defensive coordinator or something, I can run four or five plays and not give up any of my blitzes or any of that good stuff that I'm trying to hold off on for that big opponent. I'm not going to give you any of that. So, yeah. you know, and I think with, you know, with this being a Southeast Missouri, it's not a, a dress game per se, but it's one of those we have to get our minds right, right, heading into the season. And they are a formidable opponent. Um, but I just think, you know, seeing the escapability of quarterbacks, where we have to tighten up on our zones as defenders, right? So not allowing – we can't be in man all day because that's how quarterbacks can get free because our backs are turned. All the DBs backs are turned. They're running with guys. But we stay more zone, we get a chance to see a quarterback and, you know, negate a lot of those runs. Um, yeah. That was a ton of yards to give up on the ground for a quarterback, but you can tell their normal run game was really non-existent. You know what I mean? So they took care of business on that end. Um, you know, and obviously he hit us down the field a little bit, but I think the game plan seemed fairly vanilla. You didn't see a whole lot. And, you know, if we're being quite honest, it's going to be vanilla again this week just because that's how our opponent is. But not yeah. not to jump ahead, but that's just what it is. <laughs> yeah, looking at the stats, it looks like we didn't have any sacks. So, you know, with, with the quarterback not being in the pocket, you know, getting yep. out and, and, and doing a lot of rushing, that pretty much, you know, signifies um, why, why that's the case. But at the same time, you know, like we said, we understand that uh, more, more tougher – Competition is coming ahead. You know, you definitely want to get the reps in on whoever the competition is. But, you know, trying different things, uh, see what works, you know, because we know um, when Iowa come uh, this Saturday, it's going to be a lot tougher than this game was last Saturday. Yes, sir. Man, so, yeah, so big ups to, to Coach Campbell and his crew. Big ups to the Cyclones last week for their win. Um, you know, boys, keep doing your thing. Um, you got to be prepared for this week. Um, this Saturday, this is something that I know every coach has a game circled on their on their schedule. And we play, I think, three top 10 teams this year. I don't think any of those are circled as much <laughs> as with much as much ink as this Iowa game. This is, you know, again, we talked about it as we started to show out. 2011 you know so 11 years um mm. you know, we since we beat um iowa you know and so was, this is I think this it was is 14 we beat 2014 14 yeah 2014 we've been yeah we beat them in 14 i remember okay. 
we were, we were out here. I think we came out here in 2013. So we've been out okay. in Vegas since 2013. So I, 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 okay. I thought I thought I recall. Yeah, it was okay. one year since we've been out here, but I, I still didn't think it was that long. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, I was like, still, man, eleven. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't 11. I, I'm glad I, I'm glad I misspoke. You know, hey, this is our first podcast, season one, episode one. Uh, I misplaced. I miss. I misspoke on my stats. I don't got my teleprompter here with all my stats. Uh, so yeah, I messed up on that. Thanks for calling me, and I got a drink in my hand. Revelton, Revelton is our sponsor, and we don't have our bottles of Revelton yet. So I'm not going to talk about what's in my glass. But Revel, Revelton, thanks for your support. Um, very excited. Very excited about that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we talk about going in the next week again. So I'm looking at I'm looking at ESPN right now, uh, and their matchup predictor for the Power Index. We have a 58.5 percent chance to win this game. I like that. I mean, I mean, being favored. I mean, this is that's that's huge right there. Um, you know, because you know, and and it's hard to gauge because like you like you said, Brent, vanilla game. Uh, for the first game, this game is always vanilla as well. We play to fill each other out because this is a big, a big matchup for us. And so we, we kind of play, we played at a competition. They played at a competition. And what I've seen though, like when, if we, if we win the game, so 2014, we won that game. I don't think we had a good year that year. The, the years we lose to Iowa, which has been the last eight, we typically beat a couple top 10 teams because we are, we are a good team. We just don't always show up for this Iowa game. So it's very important that we have an even killed game where we show up, we show some things, we show some spark so that people start to recognize, yeah, the, the, the college playoffs not going to go to 12 teams yet, but we want to always be in that competition. And, and so, yes, like you, we talked about a win is a win. We both won. They won with two safeties. I, I'm not going to Google. If I don't know if one of y'all going to Google the last time a team one with two safeties in a game scoring less than 10 points um, because that's just crazy. I mean, I don't know what y'all think about what you saw from Iowa because looking at that, you're like, man, it's going to be a walk in the park. And we know it's not, but you look at how they played last week. Well, I mean, you talked about vanilla. That is as vanilla as you can get. Yeah, but unfortunately it is Iowa. Uh, and it's anytime, you know, Iowa, Iowa State, Northern Iowa, even Drake, you know, go up against each other. The, the strangest things in the world can happen. Um, so we can, we can be the toughest two teams in the nation or we can be, you know, two of the struggling teams in the nation. But that game is going to always be fireworks. So, you know, you, it's, it's one of those ones that's, that you very excited about. Hard to prepare because the emotions and everything run so high. Um, I don't think it doesn't matter what sport it is. It's, mm-hmm. There's no game that I get up for more than, you know, we're going to play against that black and gold. So mm-hmm. um, this weekend is going to be one of those games for, for the ages, no matter what. I, I, I think they're, the guys are very excited. We're all very excited. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be a tough one no matter what. Yeah, I agree, man. It's I mean, you know, year in, year out, it's always a battle. Right. I mean. Preparing for these games, I mean, I'll be honest, when, my, when I played, I never mm-hmm. understood, like, how crazy it was until my first year. And I was like, Yo, these people are, <laughs> like, these people are crazy behind this, right? Because I'm a Texas kid, so I didn't get it. But I saw how, you know, the entire city was and all the hate pulling up to the game, pulling up to the mm-hmm. stadium and the fam. I'm like, yo, this is, okay, well, I need to lock in because this is one of those, I got to put my seatbelt on and get ready to go to work for real because i didn't realize the hate was that big but i I, uh, in this i didn't i have not the only time i've seen hate worse than this ohio state michigan Mm -hmm. and living in columbus down down where the campus is all the buildings Mm -hmm. all the all the signs if there's an m in it it's black tape and crossed out if it's, on a, if, it, if it's on a building, it's crossed out or like they take the light bulbs out the M's on a building. And for that week, you do not say the word Michigan in Ohio. You say that team up Man. north, T-T-U-N, that team up north. And that's all. You don't you don't see Michigan on anything. It's and, that team up north. And the crazy thing is I, I bet the businesses that have 
the light bulbs and the M and, and have the logo with the M, they're probably the ones that cross them out themselves and take the mm-hmm. bulbs out. Yep. <laughs> they they yep. do. You you that okay. is that is the that's the big one of the biggest rivalries that I, I've been to. And I've been to a lot of games, but mm-hmm. you know, being an outsider to Iowa, um, coming in from Cleveland and seeing this Iowa Iowa State game and how how house divided it is. Like yeah. it's great, it's crazy. So this game means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah, for real. I mean, you know, and with that, I mean, I think it means even more to Coach Campbell this year, mm-hmm. personally. And I yes. say that because he obviously he still has not beat Iowa. Yes. And as great of a coach as he is, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously his legacy is going to be cemented, right? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he has to get over this hurdle too. You know what I mean? He is, I mean, you can tell the guys to run through a brick wall for the guy. I mean, I when I first met him, I always said he reminded me so much of Coach McCartney. It's because it didn't matter who you, you know, who he talked to, mm-hmm. like Coach McCarney, he would get you going. You run through mm-hmm. a brick wall for the dude no matter what. And I feel that same way with Campbell. Um, but I think this is that, for me, the last the last piece of his puzzle to cement his legacy. In my own this opinion. Is, this, is, this is big for him. Um, when, when I saw the, the stat that he had never beaten Iowa, I was like, mm, that, that can't be right, but Unfortunately, it is. Um, but, but like you said, Brent, you know, he's a phenomenal coach. That, that definitely is, isn't going to, you know, um, sway his record or anything that right. he's built at Iowa State. But this is one that, you know, when he gets it this Saturday, <laughs> yep. he, he's going he's gonna to understand how it feels. Speaking into yeah. existence, I like it. I like <laughs> it. Yeah. I mean, he needs to get, I mean, he, he needs to get that coach of the year again. He's got it three times with Big 12 and, and twice for um, you know, the AP ranking. So I mean, he's doing his thing. He's been there, he's he's bought in to Iowa State, extended his contract, and um, you know, he's there for them boys. And so um this is this is you know, eight years. Let's let's do it. Let's let's get it done. And so I know everybody is, is is behind him, supporting him in this endeavor this year. Um, it's going to be a tough environment being at Kennett. So not even at mm-hmm. home this year. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be very, very hard to go into that building and win. I mean, Brent, when you played, did you, have, did you ever play in that building? Yeah. What was, was that, what was that room? when you played? The pink uh, locker room? I mean, yeah, so that's when I I went there. Oh, I think I was 04, and I went in there, and it was pink locker rooms. Mm-hmm. And like I said, pulling up to the uh, pulling up to the stadium in our buses and getting beer thrown at the bus, and I'm like, this is. I thought this only happened on movies, <laughs> but like getting there and really seeing it, like I said, they really hate us up here. I was like, so I had to mentally get myself prepared, but it's a hostile environment. Like we had. Obviously, they find guys and make fun of their last names. And I think we had a Moorhead, Sean Moorhead, <laughs> and we had a dude named Ryan Cook. And it was spelled K-O-C-K. And they were going crazy. You no know, signs in there, you know, <laughs> in the stands. Hey, and- my dog started barking when you said that. They out there barking at me. That's funny. They find it funny, too. Uh, you know, I, I was watching uh, uh, Friday Night Lights in preparation for the day. Uh, I started watching that because, you know, you look at – Coming up this week, you look at that like the Perriman Carter. That was for the state championship, but this is like the state championship for for Iowa the college football. Yeah. This is this is that game is going to be dirty. It's going to be trash talking. The pink locker room. You know, you're not going to have. But they can't see what I got, but I got my five stripes hanging up in the back of back mm-hmm. of me right now. They're not going to be able to walk out to Jack Trice, and, and I will. You know, they're going to have to. You're going to have to muster all of that that cyclone energy. Uh, and bring that out there to play these boys because again last week does not do the tail the tape of what's going to happen this week we don't know what's going to happen if we can't we you know, we can sit here and i mean I, i'm going to ask everybody their predictions um when we close out this thing but you it's, it's hard it's, i mean we're going to have to start every week we're going to have to start doing our predictions like we on espn you know and see who get the most at the end of the year uh um, right. i started putting that graphic up because you know it, we don't know what's going to happen yeah, well, it's going to be a tough one for sure. Like you said, this this is this game right here is is one that we all as Cyclones look forward to each and every year. Like I said, it doesn't matter what sport it is, you always get up for this one. Um, the the pink locker room trick, 
you know, I, I know the football locker room is a lot bigger than the basketball locker room, but, you know, Larry Stacey, he, he got them to put um, – he, he take newspapers all over the wall. So I don't think it affected us as much. You know, we, we still went there and, and, and ended up losing anyways. Just like, like I said, it's a tough game. But, you know, they do try all those little tricks and things like that. It's, it's a tradition that everybody understands and knows. But uh, I think with the football team that we have this year, you know, building with the coaching staff, you know, they struggled a little bit last last uh, the last game. Um, you know, like you said, to win those to, to win that game with those two safeties and you know such a low scoring game, we're not going to let that fool us. But at the same time, I think it's something that we understand that um, going into that game focused a lot harder than we went into this last this last past game last Saturday. We can do some big things, and you know I'm, I'm looking forward to the guys coming out. I'm definitely going to be locked in. Uh, whatever is going to be playing on my schedule for that day is definitely going to be wiped off, and I'll be sitting <laughs> front and center, you know, with with all of my beat Iowa stuff around and my Iowa State hats <laughs> on, and make sure the kids are put away. And because once once Dad get, gets unleashed in front of that TV, screaming and yelling. That's when my That's dogs and stuff go to bark and they wonder what's going you're gonna on. Tell the kid, you're going to tell the kids, earmuffs. <laughs> earmuffs. <laughs> that is watching state. <laughs> earmuffs. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, know that the, game. Know the kids know a little bit of what's going on. The young Got ones, you. Yeah, so that game's at 3 p.m. Central Time on the Big Ten Network. So, make sure everybody's tuned in there. Um, last week, you know, it was on ESPN+. Plus. We got the Big 12 channel on ESPN+. Plus. Um you know, so, you know, three o'clock uh, Central Time, Saturday, September 10th um, at Iowa City. Iowa, St- Iowa State fans are now going to show up in droves, too. You know, they travel really well. And because that's a big robbery game, I would love to see more red, more cardinal than that, than anything else in that building. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think it's going to, I mean, we got we got to be loud and support these boys. Um, as you said, it's been eight years. Uh, this is coach's year, you know. Um, you know, my, my prediction as we, you know, I don't know what y'all want to add, but my prediction as we wrap it up is that I'm predicting that we're going to win by a score. Um, I think it's going to be a, a pretty low scoring game. I don't think we're going to have a high scoring that we had last week, but I think that we are going to win by a score. Um, that's my prediction. I don't know what your prediction is, Marcus. What's your, what you got? Uh, I think my, my prediction is I think we're going to win by two scores. I, I think, you know, like we said, uh, the way that, you know, the receivers have been playing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, getting out, make a couple of big plays. All we need is one or two of them to get us in that end zone and get us to move in the change and, you know, uh, put some points up on the board. So uh, it's not going to be easy without a doubt, but I, I predict we're going to win by at least two scores. What the score is going to be, uh, I don't know. Let me think about that a little bit, but uh, I, I give us two scores. Okay, okay. What you got, yeah, Brian? I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I, I mean, I was actually taking it a, just a, a hair further. I'd say 27-13 mm. in my, in my <laughs> humble opinion. And I only say 13 because I think something happens and we they give up a touchdown and we might l- allow them two other field goals. Mm. But I think 27-13, the good guys – we scored three times, get two field goals out of it too, and this ball game. Yeah, that's my opinion. I just okay. don't think our defense gives up more than that because mm-hmm. if I, you know, watching football and, and understanding I with the heart of their team is their defense at the end of the day. So um, if we score twenty points on them, we'll win the ball game. I like where everybody's heads at. I like where everybody's heads at. So we all. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I love to see that forty-two ten again. You know. I, I oh yeah. That. yeah. Nothing to- but to see that 42 of 10 again, but you know, we're gonna be realistic. I'll take two scores. Uh, uh what, what big play said, we're gonna run with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, I'm just we we're gonna walk away with the dub. Like that's said, all I right? need. But that's all yeah, I need. All that matter for real. Oh, yeah, that's that, that's that's, that's all that matter. You know, that score the, at the end of the day, the dub is all that matters. That's it, man. I think Campbell gets his gets his dub on the road, man. I think he gets his first dub on the road against the Hawkeyes. That's big time. Hey, I like it. I like it. Um, but yes, um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed our recap of you know last week's game and what we talked about going into this week's game. 
against Iowa, the big Cyhawk series. Um, you know, this is our year. All three of us on here have the Cyclones winning this game. But yes, I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, September 20 – or not September 25th, but September 24th, we play Baylor. That is the Hall of Fame uh, induction game. There are a lot of good players. Iowa Staters getting inducted, wrestling, golf, uh, softball. Everybody's getting in there. But, you know, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about our boy Reggie Hayward. Yes, uh, sir. That's the guy, uh, Broncos, Jacksonville. You know, he bought into a couple uh, uh, semi-pro uh, D-League hockey teams, Savannah, Georgia, Ghost Pirates. And, you know, he's doing his thing down there in Jacksonville. So big ups to you, homie, on getting inducted to Hall of Fame. And we will see you on the 24th. Um, yes, sir. What do you want to say to sound and send off on this, uh, Brent and Marcus? I'll give you all the y'all last uh, – Little for sure, for sure. Play. Congratulations are in store for the big fella. Um, I don't know, a lot of people know Reg used to come up in the wreck with us at who? You know, yes. right about six, 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 seven, big body. <laughs> and I, I started trying to recruit him to get out there on the basketball court. <laughs> like, man, he sounded like he crazy. He was up in there, he dunked on one end and I dunk on the other. They made us play against each other because you know, we the two biggest guys out there, but of course he was probably two or 300 pounds stronger than me. You know, moving me out the way out there. But, yeah, congratulations is definitely in store. Uh, definitely going to check the calendar and see if I can make that game and, and support the big fella and uh, look forward to, to seeing his name on the wall and the plaques and everything that comes along with definitely deserve it. That's yeah, for up. sure, man. As a, as a young dude, man, I came in shortly after. But I, I heard the, the stories of, of Reggie Hayward, man. So that's a huge accomplishment, man, to be inducted into anybody's Hall of Fame. So big shout out to him. Um, I can tell you, I can't tell you how many, how much tape we watched of him and mm -hmm. James Reed when I came in. So uh, shouts out to, to one of the OGs there, man, in the D-line, man. Congrats. And uh, I'll be up there myself, that Baylor game. So that's I'll what's definitely up. be up there. And, being there to support, man. For hey, sure, for sure. No doubt, no doubt. So I hope y'all enjoyed what y'all heard this week. Uh, again, this is a weekly show. Uh, it's going to be longer, you know, when basketball and football go on at the same time. But we have mm -hmm. a lot more to talk about. Um, but we, if you if you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button. Um, please shout out Three Beers Media. That's the parent organization. Like what they do as well. So you can subscribe to them as well. Um, Revelton Distillery. Um, they're not paying me for it yet, but I'm drinking it. So, uh, thanks Revelton for what you're doing out there. Um, doing your thing, supporting Iowa, uh, keeping it local. So with that, myself, Marcus, Brent, we, uh, we say shout out to you. Um, see you next week. Um, holla at your boy. Be safe. Be safe.